Today we will create our first application in Java language. Be prepared to have fun! Also in this lesson you will learn what are console applications, how to compile Java code to get bytecode and how to execute your first program from console. Let's start! So what are console applications? Console application is an application that takes input and displays output at command line console with access to three basic data streams. Standard input, standard output and standard error. These applications don't have any graphical user interface. They are primarily used nowadays in learning purposes. So console application is a lightweight application which might be easily run in console. During this course we'll learn tools which we have in GDK to create powerful applications. But the same as learning other human languages, the first thing you learn is alphabet. After that known letters you can create words. From words you can create sentences. From sentences you can build a story. The same is here, we'll start from console applications to learn alphabet and words. Here is what we are going to do today. As a software engineers, we'll create with you files with Java extension. We'll call these files source code. This is exactly files where programming code written in Java will be stored. After that, we'll ask Java compiler to compile source code to bytecode. Javac program will do this task. Javac will produce files with class extension. And Java will execute our program. What you need to understand and remember that GVM doesn't execute Java files. GVM executes class files. Probably this will help you in the future when you will troubleshoot issues in your real-life project. So now let's take a look how to create your first program, how to compile it and run. Team, please, don't be afraid. You won't use command line to write your programs on a regular basis. In the next lessons we'll learn special desktop applications designed to create programs. But now I'd like to ask you again to open command line wherever you want on your computer. For example, for this lesson I created a folder where I will create program together with you. Let's type cmd here to open command line. Probably you think right now, Andre, you must be kidding me. Why do we do this? Why don't we just start work with applications which help us to create programs? The answer is, there are a few points to consider. The first one. You need to learn how to work with console, at least some basics. Because sometimes, not always, but sometimes, depending on which build tool you will use, probably you would need to work with console. And sometimes, as software engineers, you would need to write scripts which will call command line commands. Real life example. You would like to compile all Java files in your project in one archive which will be deployed to the web server afterwards. Right after compiling you would like to run specific files, test classes, to be sure that tests are not failing. In case tests are succeed, you finish your build process. In case there are failures in the test, you don't proceed with your build. That is one of the examples when knowledge of common line commands might come in handy. The second point to consider. Guys, you have just started learning Java. You need to understand what compilation process is, what is compilation error and how it is different from runtime exception. That's why I ask all my students to create program in Notepad and to run it in console at least once in their lives. In some companies on the first level of interview process of junior software engineers, where you have quizzes and tests, sometimes there are also questions related to common line. We opened command line to create file with Java extension. Why we cannot just do mouse right click and create file? Because you need to enable showing of file extension first, in different windows version it is done in slightly different way, and from default options you can create file with txt extension which doesn't work for us. So let's create file from console because it is easier and it's the same way to create file from the terminal on different windows versions. Actually, I know at least few ways how to create file from command prompt, but let me show one to you. Type the following. Notepad hello world dot java. When dialog is popped up, click yes. Now we see file with java extension created here. In case you have Mac, just type like this. Touch hello world dot java. 
the file will be created. Let's write our first program. We'll cover right now basic syntax. So each Java file can have only one public class or interface. We'll cover more modifiers during OOP topic. But for now, just try to understand that in case class is public, client can access it from anywhere, including our GVM which needs to access this class. The name of public class should be the same as name of a Java file. This is the rule. In other case, you would have compilation error. Java is case sensitive. So hello world written with capital H at the beginning is completely different from hello world with H lowercase. Java is a case sensitive because it uses a C style syntax. Case sensitivity is useful because it lets you infer what a name means based on its case. For example, the Java standard for class names is uppercase in the first letter of each word. For example, like integer, string, etc. The standard for variable and method names is lowercase the first letter of the first word and uppercase in all other first letters. Number, print len, check error, etc. And the standard for constants is all uppercase with underscores. Some constant. Like this. So after hello world, let's put curly braces here. In Java curly braces define scope. Here is the scope of the class. In a few seconds you will see scope of the method. Each outer scope includes inner scope. Thus, variable declared in the class scope is visible in the method scope. But variables declared in the method scope not visible in class scope. Now we need to create entry point for our program. By convention, this method is publicly accessible. So let's type here public. It is static. We'll cover more what static is during OOP topic. It does return nothing. That's why return type is void. And it has name main by convention. This method takes as a parameter array of strings. In the next lessons we'll cover in details what arrays are. As of now consider array of strings as a sequence of strings. A parameter is a variable in the method definition. When a method is called, the arguments are the data you pass into the method's parameters. Hope this doesn't bring even more confusion. I just want you also to learn the right wording to make your colleagues understand you. Public static void main method which takes array of strings is our entry point to each Java program. GVM knows that it should call exactly this method and begin program execution from this point. Let's define scope of this method here. In this method we'll write code which will print hello world text to console output. We'll write system dot out out represents output stream. Output stream has such behavior as printing to console. Printer len method prints to console and terminate the line. Each statement in Java ends with semicolon. Printer len can take strings as arguments. Let's pass string hello world into it. In Java string literals are written inside double quotes. And one more new word. Literal. Literal is a notation for representing a fixed value in source code. Here we have string literal. Now let's save this file. Let's go back to the console. And now let's compile our program. javac hello world dot java. If you don't see any messages, that means compilation was successful. And you can notice that new file is appeared in our folder. This file has the same name as our Java file, but has different extension. This file contains bytecode for our Java virtual machine. Now let's execute bytecode on our GVM. Let's type java hello world and press enter. In this case you don't need specify extension for the file since Java expects only class files. And you see output here, hello world. Congratulations! You have just written your first console application. What are common mistakes? You can see compilation error after calling javac. And you can see runtime errors. Let me reproduce it with you. 
Let's pretend you name your public class incorrectly. Not the same as Java file name. Let's put capital D at the end. And also, let's pretend you did a typo in main method name. Let's save the file. Let's call javac now. We see compilation error. So code is not compiled to bytecode. Always read these error messages. They can help you to fix issues. For example, like here. Public class hello world should be declared in the file with the same name. We'll just rename our public class. Let's compile it one more time. But not forget to save the file before compilation process. So now everything is ok and we don't see any compilation errors. And by the way, to call commands which I just used, I use up arrow. Let's run it again. And here we have runtime exception. What does it mean? Code is compiled, but error happened during the program execution. GVM tried to find main method, but couldn't. Hope this information will help you to troubleshoot issues in case you will have once. Let's recap one more time what we have learned today. Now you know what console applications are. You understand basic Java syntax, you learn how to create Hello World application in Java. Also you saw what compilation errors and runtimes errors are. You can compile and execute your programs from the console. And here's your homework. Try to repeat everything what we did during the lesson by yourself. Also I'd like you to write bat or shell file which will compile your source code and will start your Java application. Try to do it by yourself with help of the internet if needed. And we'll check your homework in the next lesson together. And read Java code convention from the link here. Pay extra attention to naming convention. Java naming convention is a rule to follow as you decide what to name your identifiers such as class, package, variable, constant, method, etc. But it's not forced to follow. So it's known as convention, not rule. These conventions are suggested by several Java communities such as Sun Microsystems and Netscape. All the classes, interfaces, Packages, methods and fields of Java programming language are given according to the Java naming conventions. If you fail to follow these conventions, it may generate confusion.